Why? I've been hearing that a lot lately. I think all the staff has been. Um, so I don't know if, uh, do people watch um, TED Talks? And there's a very good, excellent TED Talk by Simon Sinek called The, uh, the Golden Circle. And it talks about why. But it really talks about if you're in an organization and if you're in a company, that most people know what you do. Uh, there's a lot of people, but not as many know how it is done. Uh, and the few, but the key people know why things are done. And that's whether it's in a company or whether it's a group of surgeons or it's a hospital or a medical group, why is the key concept? And why is really the motivation? I'm from LA and so, you know, give me my line and what's my motivation? It, it, it is all about why. I know that a lot of people have also been thinking about why when they look at the new ACS registry platform, even just <laughs> coming down in the elevator, somebody was telling me why? And I will get in, into this a little bit, uh, and there's going to be other things within the meeting and conference that gets into this, uh, uh, and so let me leave it for that. But why? Well, let me say for us here doing quality and safety and improvement, uh, we look at things like this. We see a graph like this, and no matter what it is, it could be our readmission rate going up or our SSI rate going up or our length of stay, we ask why. Why is this going up and why, uh, why is this happening? Uh, what can we do about it? But really, the first thing is before we blame somebody, before we say, you know, my, the turnaround time is too long and we blame somebody or the, the patient is moving and we blame somebody else, um, we ask, it's good to ask why and then we can figure out what to do. Well, this graph actually isn't a quality improvement graph. This graph is actually the annual Orlando temperatures for the year. And I know that when people saw this, that the, the annual meeting, which has been in New York and in San Diego and, and other really, really nice places, that it's in Orlando in July, we got these calls. Why? <laughs> and he, so this is Dr. Hoyt. He is our boss, uh, and he's not here, so I can use his picture. Uh, and I remember when he first heard that this conference was in Orlando, Cliff, why? Uh, uh, and even though he asked in that way, I knew he was thinking something else. <laughs> Dr. Hoyt was thinking, wow, that's fantastic. So I was just talking to Dr. Jones. Dr. Jones was the head of the division of quality uh, um, before I was. And uh, at that time, there was this big piece of the division, and there still is, about evidence-based practice and evidence-based medicine. And, and what we try to do is actually try to use evidence in the literature. And I, a lot of you contribute scientific evidence to the literature. So I wanted to take a few slides to tell scientifically why we are here. First. We are more social when it's warm. There are studies out there that says it's better to be in a warm weather place than to be social. And we are a very social group. We love to laugh and we love to converse and interact and participatory kind of discussions and all that. And so it's better when it's warm. This is a study out of the Brigham, uh, out of Harvard Medical School, that our memory is better when in warm weather. And so when there are talks and lectures and breakouts and general sessions, it's great to remember it. It's better in warm weather. Warm weather is safer. We, there's plenty of studies to know that. And this is the Quality and Safety Conference. <laughs> it only makes sense that we have it here. This next one is a doozy. And you're not going to believe it, but this is true. Sweating is good for us. Lowers our blood pressure, it helps with calories, it, and the, for the people who really enjoy the welcome reception, it detoxifies. <clears throat> this is perhaps the most important reason. When it's too cold, you can't truly enjoy ice cream. <clears throat> Just for this slide, we're going to have ice cream at some of the breaks. Uh, this little boy is definitely not happy. <clears throat> This was the welcome reception a couple years ago. All these people, including the Beebs, is enjoying their ice cream. And I don't know if anyone has ever eaten a meal with Dr. Hoyt, but 
Dr. Hoyt really loves ice cream. He orders it every dessert, and he loves having ice cream. <clears throat> so for all of those reasons, welcome to the ACS Quality and Safety Conference of 2018. It is so great to have all of you here. Uh, it is so wonderful. We are really looking forward to a great conference. And what I'd like to do in the next several minutes is, is uh, uh, oh yes, and happily, we are in evidence-based ways, we are happy uh, to be in Orlando, Florida. But what I'd really like to do is provide kind of a short uh, preview. If, um, if you've never been to this conference before, uh, we uh, 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 welcome you, and, and I'd like to share some things that are up, upcoming. If you've been to this conference before, there are some things that we've changed and we've added, uh, and I'd like to share that with you as well. So we've heard this, that the only constant is change, and one of the things of being in a, not all of us are millennials in this room, and some of us are thankful for that, but um, we live in a millennial environment, and so conferences are very much changing, and knowledge transfer is very much changing. We could take out our phone and learn so much more than we could ever have, and so a lot of people are like, well, why we go anywhere? Why do we have to learn anything uh, other than what I can get on my phone? And these conferences and knowledge transfer, as these things are changing, we really think about that a lot when we're designing our quality and safety conference. So there's three things that I want uh, people to know uh, and, and, the, and, and the committees that are, have designed this conference uh, about this conference uh, now, today, 2018, in a millennial environment. So the first thing is that even though we have a phone or a tablet that can get us an amazing amount of information, we need to have, in, uh, we, we need to have relevant and real-life examples that might not be on a blog or on Wikipedia or on Google. We need to really be able to interact with people in front of their posters or at a breakout session or, or after a talk. We need to be able to have those real live uh, uh, discussions and questions and answers. That's really important. We need to learn in a conference that should be enjoyable, relaxed, and fun, because that we know we learn better uh, in that type of setting, and that's what we're trying to do here. But the most important factor in learning in today's environment is to be interactive and participatory. I talk to my phone all the time, but it doesn't really talk back in the way it's going to be very helpful. Um, so we, that's what this conference is. That's why we go to an in-person conference rather than reading about quality improvement on our phones or on a tablet or in a textbook. This is really the key part about being at a conference like this, is talking to people who have experienced it, who've gone the, through the ups and through the downs, through the people who are leading these things, uh, and people who are leaders as well as followers, people who are part of the team, and how does that work in your place? This is why we're here at this conference like this. So in terms of the conference, there's some things to know. Uh, first of all, this is the very first time that all of the quality programs at the American College of Surgeons have come under one roof. So you guys really should deserve a round of applause for that. <clears throat> Last year we had a lot of the programs as a first step towards this, and this year uh, the cancer programs and the trauma programs and uh, some of the Red Book people have come, and so now we have all of the quality programs here at the college. So that is a big thing, and, and it, it really gives a great opportunity to learn from each other about what they do in trauma that is so great, and cancer that is so great, and in bariatrics, and in Nisquip, and in children's, and all these things, because there's a lot of cross-cutting things that we can learn and apply to other, uh, your own area. So there are six things that I want to bring forth about the conference when we were designing it and, and the, the parts of it. So the first thing is this. There's core content for everybody. As you can see from the program, and it is a long, kind of very complex program, but breaking it down, uh, there's core content for everyone in the general sessions. This was meant for everyone. This was meant for whether you're at a children's or trauma or cancer. Uh, these things were meant for everyone. The first thing is perspectives on quality from the programs. Each program has done some really, really amazing things about quality, but a lot of times we don't know what happens in the, these programs if we're not in them. So part of this, part of the conference in these general sessions is to hear what trauma has done that is great, and what NISQIP has done that is great. And we can take those lessons and very much potentially apply it to our own programs. Emotional intelligence. We know, and my coach tells me all the time, that IQ is, is good, but EQ is maybe better. 
And so we had a session on EQ last year. Some of the comments from the reviews, actually a lot of them said, can we have more EQ things? Uh, and my coach tells me I need more EQ things. So we need to have more EQ things, and it's really important to do that. Uh, we have some great speakers on emotional intelligence. What if our dashboard looks great? Now what? So uh, there's a lot of times when our dashboard has the red in it, and we know to work on it, and how we prioritize all, all the red. But we've been hearing a lot that we don't have any red, so should we do nothing? What do we do now? Uh, that's a good problem to have. We don't have it at our hospital, but, uh, but th that is something. And so we have a whole uh, session on that uh, later today. What is our dashboard look great? Now what? Communication and culture, these are perhaps two of the most important. And for people, I see people uh, nodding their heads that these are probably two of the most important things uh, that, are, that, are, uh, uh, that are integral to doing quality improvement. Uh, you can never communicate enough and your culture can never be great enough. And when you visit a place that communicates well and has amazing culture, you're just like, it is, it is, it is like ice cream. It is great when you see, see that. The opiate crisis, we have some experts, national and international experts on the opiate crisis, and all of us are working on that in whatever specialty we're in, and hospitals and hospital systems and states and our country is working on that. The next one, putting our patient first. I really wanted to highlight this because increasingly more, uh, the patients and, uh, are, are, are having a voice, which is great. Uh, but we have to really understand what that is. So we have our, in all of our hospitals, we have the CAPS survey for patient uh, reported experience. There's patient reported satisfaction. Increasingly more, there's patient reported outcomes. Our geriatric colleagues and our other colleagues are telling us about shared decision making and aligning our procedures with patient goals and how do we do that better. Uh, so putting the patient first is going to be an amazing uh, session for all of us because regardless, again, of what specialty we're in, that is an important piece of care. And why we all went into medicine anyway was to highlight the patient. Standardizing for efficiency, increasingly more, it's value over volume. How do we gain efficiency both in cost efficiency and quality efficiency and safety efficiency? And so one of the key parts about that is standardizing. So how do we do that across the spectrum within surgery? And finally, Pearls for QI, that's a session that we asked each of the leaders in each of the programs that if there was one thing, one key thing about QI that you could share with the rest of this conference, what would that be? And so it was really, it was a great pre-session or pre-conference call because People were excited, like, we know what that one key thing is, and this is the answer to the world. And so we have the six programs uh, sharing that with us. So that's the general sessions, and that's for everybody. What I'd like to say now is that in addition to that, there are the programmatic tracks, and as I mentioned before, now we have a cancer track. So regardless of what program you're in, if you want to learn about what the cancer program does, and the trauma and emergency surgery track, we know that emergency surgery just by itself, having that ticked off emergencies, has put, uh, gives us an increased risk. And so how does trauma and emergency surgery deal with quality? And there's going to be some amazing things that is shared in that. And then also the Red Book course, which I'll get to. These breakouts then are very much color-coded for this. In blue, you can see is, is, is Nisquip and such things as delirium or what a surgeon champion or a clinical champion should know about quality improvement. You don't have to be a NISQIP to understand the importance of delirium and what you should know about that or what a surgeon champion does. In PEDS and the children's program, using data to drive QI, implementing best practices, that is key. And again, you don't have to be in children's dealing with children uh, to, to think that that is important. Uh, the trauma folks have, again, emergency general surgery and their program and their initiative for zero preventable deaths and disability. That is a national program that they announced in DC, and this is what we're all trying to do to get to zero preventative problems. Operative standards and navigation from cancer, which is in green, and then the clinical scenarios and successful collaboratives from bariatric, that is something that all of us can learn, and all of us do uh, pretty much work in teams, but how do you do it in a collaborative? You can learn that from bariatric. <clears throat> Panel discussions, this was a key part, and. And we really um, parceled out the time so that the, at the end of every set of sessions, uh, there is a panel discussion. Because that's where we can start to discuss things rather than a rote 
uh, lecture or, or just people's PowerPoint slides, but these uh, discussions. And we've really asked the moderators to stimulate discussion and ask the questions that people have. And there's microphones in every, uh, every session. Uh, we encourage you to participate and be interactive and ask these experts questions. It's really amazing the number of experts and the amount of experience that is collectively or individually in this room. And there are, there are so many leaders that are in the general sessions, but there are so, also so many leaders and experienced people in the breakout sessions, which is amazing that you could really kind of get up to anybody and, and ask them these questions, and they have a wealth of experience. There are so many chairs of surgery. There are so many leaders of QI and hospital systems here. And, and this, uh, this conference is meant to be very interactive and, 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 and having great discussions with them. New also to this conference is the quality course. We've had quality courses as a pre-conference thing where people come and kind of cram it into a couple few hours and, and, um, and so forth. But here, we're having a new track, and it's called the Red Book track. And so where did the Red Book come from? The Red Book came from this book that is red. Uh, it is called The Optimal Resources for Surgical Quality and Safety, and that's a mouthful. So people just started calling it the Red Book, and so we call it the Red Book course. The Red Book was finished uh, last year, and I think many of you who were here last year uh, have a copy of it. Um, but what the Red Book is, is the collective experience uh, and, and expertise of a whole bunch of people who have done quality and surgery over decades put into a book. We kind of, the working title when we were writing the book is called The Quality Manual, and it's not a textbook on quality. It's not the history of quality. It doesn't go into all that, but it's really, if you want to have quality in your place, and whether that's the facility or the department or the division or you and your, your, you know, your surgical partner or just you and your team, this is what this book was meant to be. It's a manual for quality. And it has these chapters within it, and I won't go through these things, and you've probably maybe been able to leaf through it. There's a table out there that has the books. But it's really the important things uh, that a facility, or again, wh whatever universe you're talking about, needs to have in order to maintain quality. And this is from experience from all of our quality programs and experience of all of the authors. There's over 100 authors there. So resources, what is the commitment? What is standardized, reliable care? What is the personnel you need to have there in terms of leadership? Case review is probably one of the most important things. And how well is that done in, in, in the facility? Obviously, culture and aligning quality with credentialing and privileging and that FPPE and OPPE stuff, this is really a key book. And the book was meant, uh, and it is, as we are, people are using it now, to be agnostic to surgical specialty. So whether you're in general surgery or urology or orthopedics or neurosurgery or any or multiple combinations of that, that's what this book was meant to be agnostic to it and goes across the specialties. It's also supposed to be going across kind of that, that hierarchy or, or the, the ladder of experience. So people who are leading departments and leading hospitals, uh, we had a, a CMO on the author list for doing that, and to the youngest people. And John Morton sent me this picture that he has his young one uh, looking at this book. Um, and I don't know if this is a fun picture or John is really that tiger dad is starting him young, but this is really uh, a, a, a what we're doing. <clears throat> but there are two things that I want to tell you about uh, because uh, to clear things up. Some people have coming up to me like, I heard that you're having site visits to hospitals about the Red Book. What's that all about? How come I can't find it on the web? So. The, the, the background of that is that the optimal resource guide, as we went through it, certain things kind of floated to the top in terms of importance. And we kind of developed these and made them what we call standards. Like if a hospital wants to be really good, a facility wants to be really good, this is a standard. They should have this. And then they should have this. And, and so we have about 10 or 12 standards, and we've started to vet them out. And we started to do site visits. We just did a site visit a few weeks ago, and we have a number of others slated that we're just piloting it and, and, and sharing with hospitals what we think is important, having the hospitals share with us how uh, they've done it and how things are attainable and how uh, this is helpful or not. Uh, and so we've started to do that. We, again, we've done one a few weeks ago. We have a number slated for the rest of the year. Uh, if this is something that you are in, so I'm going to put this out there, and it's not on the web. Um, if, you, if this is something that you're interested, please let us know. 
you can drop your name off or your hospital's name off at the Red Book area. We, we can talk about it. We can't promise that we're going to visit and, and do that. Right now, Dr. Hoyt and I are doing the, um, the, the visits, and are, are, we can only do so many. But this is something that uh, we're starting to do, the site visits to hospitals. And again, it is just a pilot. The Red Book track is, is really more apropos for all of you because in this conference right now, the track that is Fire Engine Red uh, at, uh, across the conference is really the quality course. And it is really addressing four, these four areas. What are the resources that are needed in your institution to uh, achieve optimal quality? Second is how to uh, attain standardized, reliable care in the five phases. Uh, and when we talk about the five phases, it goes from pre-op to post-discharge. How do we get standardized care across those things? Uh, the third uh, area is case review. Uh, how is that done? Most people think that, oh, we do m and But when we see hospitals, uh, a lot, probably uh, uh, very often, a lot more needs to be done than just m and and then the last one is interpreting and using data, which is basically the quality improvement techniques and the importance of all that. So that is the Red Book track, and that is the quality course. And I encourage you, when you have the breakouts, that that is always going to be there as an option for the breakouts. And if you see something that is very interesting for you, uh, please attend that. The last thing is networking and sharing. And every year we talk about, and we always hear back in the comments, that this is a great conference to learn from each other and to make new friends and to really have new colleagues uh, from across the country or internationally uh, about dealing with quality and safety. And so networking and sharing is a big part of the conference. Uh, and as we see in our uh, comments again, that some people, a lot of actually people say that this is the best part of the conference. Um, uh, and, you know, walking around last year that, you know, people enjoying the libations are like, maybe this is the only thing that they remembered. Uh, but this is the welcome reception and it is tonight from six to eight o'clock and it is Point Orlando. And it's, we, almost every year we have a problem with the buses, right? There's like a thousand people waiting for the bus to get over to the site. And we're like, can we walk someplace? And so, this year, we're going to try this. It's a five to seven minute walk. Um, you do pass by. <laughs> when we were walking there, like, are there any alligators here? And the guy's like, oh, don't worry. It's only if in bodies of water. I'm like, you mean like that one? Um, so um, <laughs> if you see an alligator, it might be a three minute walk. Uh, <laughs> But there will be no waiting for a bus. It's very easy to get there. You walk to the end of the block uh, away from the water. You, there's a, you cross the street, and then you're basically there. There will be monitors and purple shirts uh, that will help you. There are signs like, go this way, um, there, th that will help you get there. It's very easy to get to. I, we walked it earlier in the week. Um, the two things to remember is this. Casual dress. Don't wear your suits. I am not going to wear this. Um, it's going to be like a block. Think of it as a block party. Uh, like a progressive block party, because there are five restaurants that you can go through. Uh, don't bring your bag, don't bring your computer, unless you don't mind beer spilling on it. Um, uh, so don't do that. Very important, bring your badge so that people know your name. Um, and bring your ticket. It's probably in your badge. Uh, this is a one area just for us in this larger area, and they're not going to let us in unless we have the ticket. So casual, badge, ticket. There are five restaurants, and this is what I was talking about, the Progressive. You can go to these. The, importantly, they, it is air-conditioned, uh, and there's different foods in each of these. A couple of them have live music, and they, they say that people love dancing there uh, with the libations. Um, and importantly, uh, at the bottom, uh, for the first 30 minutes, uh, there are open bar, there's water and soft drinks for people who don't want to drink alcohol. There's wine and beer. But for the first 30 minutes, each uh, restaurant has a specialty drink. I can't remember what they are, but they're special. Um, and then for the final 30 minutes, and this is, they made a big deal of this, so I added it to the slide. And um, the, for the final 30 minutes at the Adobe restaurant, there's supposedly this amazing donut that they serve there, and that always goes very quickly. So um, uh, I thought I'd just mention that. The second area for networking and sharing is this. On Monday night is the poster and networking reception. Uh, the posters, if you saw them walking here, it's really, it's a great venue. I mean, it's so airy and spacious, and, and the people love this uh, 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 time to also network. We ask the people who have posters to be in front of their posters for just the first hour and the second hour, go around and see everyone else's great work. Um, 
there's, again, voting for the best poster. Uh, we have an inkling that people stuff the ballot box. Just go ahead. Um, we can't stop it. Just go ahead. Uh, and, and there's also a raffle. <clears throat> so now, getting to the platform. This is when I ask our IT folks and our vendors, like, what the, he what the heck is uh, what going on? And they say, and they tell me, like, do you ever heard this jingle, this ditty about uh, software coding? I'm like, no. And so this is what they say. And don't, you don't sing along. I'll just say it. Uh, 99 little bugs in the code, 99 little bugs. Take one down, patch it around. 127 little bugs in the code. <laughs> And, and, I, and I say, wow, that's fantastic. No, I, um, uh, why? Why? Uh, and, you know, I, and they say, you know, and they sit me down, and after I calm down, I'm like, yeah, this is just, this is part of progression. This is part of progress. This is part of when trying something new. This is part of what you do for quality improvement. You don't get it 100% right every single time. Uh, and, and you're a colon surgeon, you should know that. Um, uh, and, uh, and this is what happens. And we are in good company. This happens with Google. This happens with your iPhone. This happens at your hospital. This happens internationally. This is what happens. And so to all of you who are frustrated, and uh, I can tell you that this conference has even barely started, and I'm getting people's frustration even just walking here. Um, uh, we understand it. The staff understands it, we hear it, and, and, and there are obviously things that we need to improve on. We will, there's gonna be some things within the conference about the data platform. There's the informational tables, and I know people are using those already. I encourage you, uh, whatever issues you have, if it's a problem, or if it's a quality improvement aspect that you think that could make it better, and a lot of people have said, yeah, I like it, this is what would make it better. Share it with the informational tables. They're there to answer questions, but also to get your comments and to get your recommendations and suggestions, because that's how things are going to get better. There's also a breakout session on Tuesday uh, that the staff and the vendors will help lead uh, to give you information on what this new thing is. And so if you're in trauma and in NISQIP, you know uh, that we've made the migration. If you're in uh, bariatric and cancer, it's coming. And so that would be interesting for everybody in this room who's dealing uh, with data uh, to go to that session. I would like to say that this uh, platform, uh, if we take a step back and look at the vision of this platform, uh, is still the vision of what the college thinks uh, and what a lot of experts think is the key thing for achieving quality improvement. So we know that the quality programs, we want to get the data onto a single platform. This is helpful for a lot of reasons. So we don't have to duplicate, so that if you're in a hospital and you want to look at things across programs, that it is easier, so that we can get things together, so that if you're in NISQIP and you have a cancer patient, that you can get cancer data to help adjust. Or if you're in a cancer program, you can get risk adjustment to figure out even better the long-term survivals and what are the factors of comorbidities and complications on those things. There are such great opportunities for putting them onto the data platform. It is the right thing to do. Also on the platform, and you can see in the green arrows there of data in, how do we get, how can we automate? And if we automate in one program, why wouldn't we automate in all the programs? And so we're working very hard to figure out automation of what we can automate. And you can see in the second to last bullet, and still maintain data accuracy. We've worked with companies that's like, yeah, we can automate it. It's not very accurate. But that's OK. Like, no, that's not OK. We need to be just as accurate. And if it's not accurate, it doesn't matter how fast or automatic, automatically it goes in. We need it to be accurate. And so data automation is what we're working on very, uh, very hard. The reports, the new uh, 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 platform is really addressing the reports. As we've looked at collectively all the different programs and all the different reports that come out, it's really amazing to see that each program has amazing reports. How do we get, how do we kind of share the wealth and get all these amazing reports for all the programs? And so that's there, uh, and, and that's really been one of the aims of all this. And then the last one is to take advantage of advancing technology. Technology is advancing all the time, and this is, these are some graphs that if you look at the current technologies and their ability, in the next five years, the current technology ability will be 32 times more advanced. And in the next 10 years, it'll be a thousand times more advanced. 
The advancement of technology is exponential. I mean, just look at our smartphones. Before we had smartphones, what we, we couldn't do so much. Uh, and, and so this is what we're trying to do with the, with the, with the platform. Uh, when I talk to our people, and I remember maybe five, seven years ago, like, can we do this? And like, our platform won't allow us to do that. We were on a system that was so archaic that it wouldn't allow us to do that. And I know that there are some programs where, like, yeah, that's, that, we can't do that. And so this is the reason to bring it up to speed. Uh, the bugs are annoying. Uh, the bugs are a real thing, and uh, th they need to be addressed, and they are. Some additional informational tables. All the quality programs have, uh, uh, have informational tables, and so go visit them, your own program or other programs. Um, the developing programs, there's a developing program in geriatric surgery. There's a developing program in ISCR, which is Improving Surgical Care and Recovery, which is basically enhanced recovery. Uh, they are now recruiting hospitals that want to do enhanced recovery in either colorectal, in gynecology, or orthopedics. It's a free program. It is, uh, it is funded by ARC. Uh, there's a lot of materials that you get just for joining, and so go visit that table. Strong for Surgery is a preoperative readiness program that has just expanded the topics that they are um, uh, preparing patients uh, in, uh, and then the Red Book, which I talked about. Statistics and clinical support are always very busy tables because people have questions about statistics and clinical variables and would it be better this way or that way. So uh, they are always available and happy to talk to you. If you're getting credit here, CNE or CME, uh, there's a table for that. We have an app this year. Uh, last year I showed the app and it showed how many unanswered emails I had, so I'm not going to do that again this year. Uh, but there's an app that shows you everything about the program. If you have questions about that, it's pretty self-explanatory, but if you have questions, there's a table for that. Finally, in addition to having all the programs in the college uh, for, our, for the quality programs, uh, there are other major divisions that are also here and participating in this program. So the Division of Education has patient materials for quality, that if our patients want to learn about an ostomy or how to do wound care, there are materials that the college has for that, and so go check those out. Uh, member services, they just said there's a membership for the uh, associate members, and it's free. Uh, so you get all this great stuff for free, and so go visit the member services. And finally, the, the, the Washington, D.C. office, the Division of Advocacy and Health Policy. Frank Opelka and Christian Chalgin, two of the directors from that office, are here. And I think that, you know, for a lot of the surgeons, they always ask, like, well, why is this policy like this? Well, why does CMS do this? And why do we have to do this? It would be better to do this, whatever. Frank and Christian are here. They're here on Sunday at two times at 10 o'clock and 3 o'clock and want to talk to you about these things and hear your ideas. And so if you're a surgeon here at that time and you want to see Frank and Christian, uh, they will be here um, tomorrow at 10 and 3 at one of the tables out there. Finally, the concierge, the, the conference has our own concierge. In the comments, very interestingly, we heard that um, can we have a night that's free instead of you, telling, you know, having all these things? Can we have a free night? Um, I'm like, no, you can't. No, yes, we can. And so, uh, so on Sunday, tomorrow night is a free night. And so there's, there's a lot of things, obviously, to do in Orlando. There's a lot of great restaurants and theme parks, and they have uh, a wealth of information, so the concierge is available. Every year we try to get a great keynote speaker, and we've had leaders of healthcare and leaders of CMS and leaders, uh, we had a tool, uh, Gwande, and leaders and other leaders in quality improvement, Peter Pronovos. Um, this year is the first year we've had a professional athlete come. He is a kicker for the San Diego Chargers and has an amazing story that I think you will be very inspired by. Uh, not only that, he knows his vowels and consonants because he was also a, uh, 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 on the Wheel of Fortune as, uh, uh, after Pat Sajak. Uh, that's probably too old for many of you. Uh, but, uh, but he was on the Wheel of Fortune, and uh, he has a, is a great family man, which is a great story in and of itself. He is an author, and it's Rolf Bernerska, and it's Lessons from a Grateful Patient. He was a patient, and I'm, this is in his book, and it's not HIPAA violation. He was a patient in the same hospital at the same time that Dr. Hoyt was in. Uh, and so um, that's a, a, a connection there, and, and Dr. Hoyt will uh, be introducing uh, uh, Mr. Bernerska. Now, I'm sure I know that a lot of people had a hard time coming into uh, 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 the conference from the airplane. 
uh, and uh, probably going through the airport grumbling. Uh, you probably didn't see these places. But I, I, I travel a lot, and I love going to airports, and I love seeing the, the stands of books. And because, like, what is a hot book now? What are the things that people are reading? What are the messages that people are saying? And as I go through these, I see that there's something that's very interesting about books nowadays. <clears throat> books have only one word titles. <clears throat> I mean, Tale of Two Cities uh, or, or um, Moby Dick, two words, five words. Uh, but now there's only one word. And if there was going to be actually a book from this conference that was one, I was thinking, like, what would that word be? And um, it's partnering. And so one of, the, one of our themes for this conference is partnering uh, for improvement. And I think that we should really think about this as we're going through the conference is is partnering. And if we look at the definition of partnering, it's an action verb. It's sharing with others knowledge and trust and actions uh, to achieve a common overarching goal. And this year in 2018, we've had a lot of partnerings to achieve amazing goals. Uh, and, and, and we can see this, and I think that this conference uh, is, is another one of these things where we can partner. If we think about partnering and this arch, so I got a C minus in art history and architecture. However, I did learn about arches. And the arch is a very important thing in, in architecture throughout history uh, because you can make a, a building without using any mortar or cement based on the principles of an arch and the way the, way, way the pressures go. And the, and the stone that is key is the red stone, and that's why it's called the keystone. Um, and, and if we look at this and, and ha, in a healthcare metaphor, have this be the patient's, uh, the patient is supported by all these other stones. And so whether all these other stones are individual providers, surgeons, anesthesia, pharmacy, dietitians, and, and PAs, and our NPs, and our nurses, and pre-op and post-op, or they're done by the college and in, in, in our quality improvement programs, the keystone is the patient. Um, Lee Neumeyer is here, and she's our chair of the Board of Regents. And she, we, in our Board of Regents room, right on the top of the wall, is the mission of the college. And the college is dedicated to this, improving the care of the surgical patients. And that ultimately is why people go into healthcare, And that ultimately is why we try to improve the quality that where we are now to get from better to even better. And so this is what we're trying to do in terms of all this. And if these are all the programs supporting the patients, that's what we have here at this conference. Every single one of these stones and the, and the uh, experience and expertise of these programs are here to support these patients. Partnering also is from in, within the conference of all these tracks. And I would like to thank publicly these people because each of these tracks had these leaders uh, helping to devise these tracks within the tracks, for the tracks, by the people in these tracks. These people are uh, tremendously helpful and great volunteers, and I'd like to give them a round of applause right now. <clears throat> I told you I just did Photoshop, and I'm only going to show this for a second. Uh, but uh, they are heroes, every single one of them. Uh, and uh, that'll be that. Um, and also a great thanks to the college staff. So if you are in one of the programs, you know that there's a lot of staff behind the scenes that are doing the work. And so each of the programs, and collectively there's about 100 people here from the American College of Surgeons, and the staff behind the scenes that are helping to get these programs to work. So a thank you to the college staff, but also to all these other folks from the college. The meetings and conventions, uh, Carla Stucker is here who is leading and she's always behind the scenes and she's always making things work and when something is not working she fixes it uh, and also advocacy, health policy, member services, education and integrated communications. These are all the people here and I also, I don't know if anyone's in the room, but also want to publicly thank them as well because they put on and do an amazing job. <clears throat> Finally, you, you are probably the most important part of this conference because this is where the knowledge comes from, this is where the interactions and networking comes from, and this is what goes out after these few days into the world to help patients get better care. So a thanks goes to you. Um, uh, I'll end here by welcoming you here to the 
2018 Quality and Safety Conference. Thank you for attending. Thank you in advance for networking. Thank you for sharing your expertise and knowledge. Dr. Hoyt uh, also thanks you. Uh, he is not here yet. He had to take a later flight, so which allows me to use one more Photoshopped picture. He welcomes you as well, and in the theme of Orlando, this is a secret between the 2,000 of us, um, uh, so we, uh, let's keep that as good. But thank you very much for partnering for improvement. Welcome to the conference. Have a great, fun, enjoyable, uh, participating, interactive three days at the conference. And I thank you very much. Thank you.